Hey, Stitchy friends, it's Carol, Saltbox Stitcher. Um, today is Saturday, January 9th, and it's about 12.30 in the afternoon. And yes, I said Saturday. <laughs> I decided if I can, I'm going to start videoing on Saturday rather than Sunday. That way, if it takes a while to upload or um, it just frees up my Sunday to go... Um, back to real church instead of virtual church. So um, I kind of decided. But there may be some times that I do it on Sundays. So whenever is whenever. <laughs> so how are you? Um, how's the new year treating you? This is 2021, and here we are, trying to have a good time. <laughs> um, this is going to be a long one. So I... Obviously, if you need to watch it in segments, then be my guest, which you are. Welcome. <laughs> so this is a video about cross-stitch, and this is video number, now my husband just told me, I think he said 37. <laughs> and I, I usually have a pretty good math brain, but. So what I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you things that I finished stitching in 2020, things I'm working on currently, although that can always change, and my huge <laughs> box of whips that's right here. So um, that's what's going to take a while. I kind of have accumulated more whips in 2020 than I have any other year, I think. But it doesn't really bother me because I still love every one of them. And I know a lot of people say they have whips from, you know, 10 years ago or five years ago that they're not as crazy about or they're not really interested in finishing. I don't really have that. Everything I have is pretty much in the last five years, I think. And I still love all of them. And um, so that's where I am. And every one of them. I would like to finish. <laughs> so if you hear me saying I need to get back to that, we could we could make it a drinking game. <laughs> Doesn't have to be alcohol. It can be, you know, Diet Coke, water, whatever. You know, call it the hydrating video. <laughs> anyway, I know that I will repeat myself and say, oh, I still love this. I need to get back to it. So there's one. <laughs> We were out of, my husband and I drink a lot of Diet Coke. I go in and out of um, where I'm like, have one every day, and then other times I'll go a week or two and not have any. You know, it just kind of depends. Because um, I can get tired of it. <clears throat> but we were out of Diet Coke for like a week, and he drinks at least one or two a day. Although he's trying to do better and drink more water. He just likes stuff flavored. So even if he drinks water, he adds some lemon juice or something to it. But anyway, um, finally yesterday, <laughs> he went and got a case of Diet Coke. We were both like, rip it up in the package. <laughs> give, me, give me a Diet Coke. It was kind of a sign of addiction, I think. Anyway. But the very first thing I want to show you, and then I'm going to show you what I've been stitching on, and then I'll show you what I did in 2020. Then I'm also going to show you some finished but not framed that I did prior to 2020. And then I'll get into whips, if I have time for all that. We'll see. But um, I'm not going to show you any haul. I don't think I got that much. There were a few things I got, but I can show you that on my next video. But I did want to mention a gift that I got. Um, I'm in a group of fl floss tubers, and we did a Christmas exchange. And the person that had my name was Christy from Crosshatch Quilts, and she made me... Is that right? Yeah. She made me this. Be Merry and Bright. This is a Scarlet House piece. And she backed it with a cute fabric that has holly leaves. And then she trimmed it with some chenille. And I love it. It's adorable. I've kept it out. I put away all my Christmas, but I kept it out so I could show you. And then she also sent me this cute little Santa by Old Timey's. You can find old timies on 
um, Facebook and on Etsy. It's O-L-D-T-I-M-E-Y-S, Old Timeys. She does a lot of cute little... She did the... Um, I think her name is Delma. And she did the cute um, Halloween witch and pumpkin head guy that I got. So, anyway. Thank you, Christy. Love them. And I will remember you every Christmas when I get those out. If not, every other day. Okay, so what have I been stitching on? Uh, prior, I, I did have a New Year's start, and I'll show you that in a minute. And prior to that... I I had mentioned this piece last time that I had started, but I literally had like 10 stitches in it. So it was kind of pitiful. This is uh, Midsummer Night Designs Peaceful Paradise. And it has the 23rd Psalm. And I have just a little start on this. I went across, and then this is the wing of, I think it's the wing of an angel. Yes, right here, there's an angel. So I've come across on this side here, and then I'm starting the angel. And I'm doing this on a piece of, hold oh, please, 36 count exemplar by Lakeside. Oops, it goes this way. So, and then I started a little bit of the blue, which is like the daytime sky. So, I'm, I'm enjoying that, and I'm anxious to get back to it. Here's the threads. Some overdyed, some DMCs. Originally, I got this pattern from the attic. I don't know if they still have it or not. It was something I saw on their wall when I was there in 2019. So anyway, I started that, or I continued. I had a few stitches actually in it. But. And then I've talked about this one forever and a day. A Mind Independent and Free. And I like the idea of this long skinny piece. In fact, in rearranging some of our things after Christmas, when you take the decor down, Christmas, stuff. I love the clean look and even though my house is decorated kind of I don't know some people would say cluttered. I don't have the super super you know nothing look like some of the younger people nowadays do. <laughs> like, like my daughter my daughter-in-law they love that what's it called? Minimalist look. But anyway, I decided to go ahead and start this. So I'm going down with the alphabet. And then I have, I wanted to get to this. So I have just a few stitches over here. This looks like Smyrna's, or eyelets, I guess, not Smyrna's. But it's not. It's just crosses, just regular crosses. Then you don't stitch in the very middle of the cross. And this is also done on a piece of, only this is 40 count exemplar. And I will definitely get back to that. And it doesn't take very many threads. Hold on. I had a stray piece of black that I needed to keep with it. It just has, I think, four or five NPIs. And I actually thought about changing this yellow and this kind of peachy orange. But I've seen some of them finished and it's just not a dominant color so I don't think I'm gonna mess with it. Then my new, so those I did, I started or worked on between Christmas and New Year's. Oh, I did have one other thing I wanted to mention that's haul. This is Ultimate Sampler Motif Source Book by Brenda Keys, the sampler company. I actually ordered this from her um, website, which is in the UK. 
but I know Kitten Stitcher had it. She sold out and she was going to be getting more. So go to Kitten Stitcher and see if she's gotten this in yet. It's chock full of alphabets, motifs, houses, people, bands, animals, birds. It's crazy full. And it's fun just to look at it, you know. So, anyway. My um, <clears throat> January 1st start, and I mentioned that this was probably going to be the best candidate, is Elizabeth Watt by Milady's Needle. The picture is not even close to representing, and I, that's, that's not a reflection on the designer. That's just photography. I mean, just doesn't show how beautiful the sampler really is. So let me show you where I am on this. This has been, well, I wouldn't say it's an, been a nightmare, but this really rattled my brain. <laughs> so this is where I am on it. I started it January 1st. So I've stitched on it for eight days. Two of those days. Okay, so the bottom down here. The bottom on this side matches. The bottom on this side is just kind of hanging free. So technically, it, your border doesn't have to meet because you could certainly fudge around here. But being the weirdo that I am, which, by the way, somebody said, please, please, please stop cutting yourself down. This is just how I talk. <laughs> this is me. But being the, um, I don't really think of myself as being OCD. If I was, I'd probably have a lot cleaner, <laughs> cleaner house. But um, stuff like this bugs me. It's, it's sort of like if I lose something that I know I have. Maybe a chart, you know, even even a shirt. <laughs> There's been times I'm like, I know I washed this shirt and I can't find it. It's not in the laundry. It's not, I don't know what happened to this shirt. And then I'll go looking and I might have folded it and put it in with my husband's stuff. Who knows? But until I find it, it drives me nuts. And my son is the same way. He is like a dog with a bone. And I'm the same way. I have to find it. So I had I was off when I got here by one stitch. So I went around and counted and this this chart this is such an interesting chart because it says that she was 11 years old. But I'm wondering if she started this when she was a lot younger. Because every one of these in and outs is different. So there's no way that you can get in a rhythm. You have to stop and count and count and count and count and count. So what I generally do with something like that, let me see if I can show you without really showing the chart. I will mark along the side how many so this one you know this one is seven this one, and I do it in pencil this one's 15 on down then when I go past that I'll mark it off so that I know that's where I am because otherwise you get in the middle of a long border like this and you're like okay was I on 15 was I on seven especially if you have to put it down and pick it back up again so I went back compared the chart compared my nup first of all I looked at my numbers to see if I had counted and written it down wrong. Then I went back and recounted my stitches and I could not find my mistake. So I thought, well, I'll start stitching the bands across because that'll tell me when I get to the other side, if it's not where it's supposed to be, that'll tell me I'm off in, you know, that section. For example, if I start here and it's supposed to be start right there, 
and I get to the other side, if it's not right here, then I know somewhere in the top border I'm off. So <clears throat> the whole time I'm stitching those bands, I'm like stopping and recounting because <laughs> to see if maybe I can find it before I have to stitch all the bands. So I stitched this band, just part of it. I stitched, let's see, this band, and I was okay. I stitched this band, oops. Ah, and I was okay. And I got to this one and I was off. And I was off over here. So I counted and I counted and I, I couldn't find it. It was exactly what it was supposed to be. So then I started going stitch by stitch. <laughs> this, is, this is what you call neurotic. I started going stitch by stitch to make sure I'd gone over two threads. And I finally found there was a slub in the linen and I didn't see the little small thread that was next to the slub. And so I had gone over three, and then I'd gone over three again so that I got myself back on track next to my vertical thread, but those two were off. And so I was like, glory, hallelujah. I was just ecstatic that I finally found, I was able to sleep that night because <laughs> I finally found my mistake. So anyway, so then I started filling in the, ba the bands, and I feel like I've built like a skeleton. <laughs> And then now I'm finally to the point where I can start putting in some flowers and some motifs. And so I will do some of the border flowers as I go. And then, you know, there's, there's some, um, the other interesting thing about this piece, it's just, it's just very interesting to me. And I don't, I've never charted a reproduction. I have no desire to chart a reproduction. But I'm sure that people that chart reproductions are like, oh, yeah, that happens all the time. So I don't know if you can, well, my needle's in the way, so you definitely can't see that. Let me move my needle. There's some bands that go across, like this one that's kind of orangey, and it's perfect all the way. Then there's this one. See if I can get it close enough. Where all of a sudden she goes, instead of going up three, down three, she goes up four. See that? Right there. And then over here, she kind of goes goofy. So I'm wondering if some of the bands she did when she was younger, and then some of the bands she did when she was older. Either that or she had somebody helping her. Because... Like this band, this kind of teal colored one is perfect. But let's see, where's the other one that's off? This one is off. So I just find it very interesting. You know, maybe she did the border first when she was young and then she started doing some things and then went back and filled in. Because you can tell. It's just obvious that some bands are way off and others are perfect. I find that to be very interesting. So anyway, that's Elizabeth Watt by Milady's Needle. I'm using the called for NPIs. And I think I mentioned last time how beautiful some of these reds are. There's both kind of forest greens and olive greens. I just haven't put in very much of the olive greens yet, but there's, so it's, it's a fun one now that I've passed my neurotic mistake. So, so those are the three things I've stitched in the last couple weeks. Um, yeah, my last video was right after Christmas. So two weeks. Yeah. It's what I've stitched. Um, I have my new calendar all set up, and I have a sticker book coming. I don't have the um, the big sticker book, but there was another one that I found that I thought, oh, I'm going to order this one. 
things are falling on the floor. So next I'm going to show you things I finished in 2020. Now, a couple of these are out for framing, so I just have to show you the picture. But in January, the first one I finished, oops, let's go this way, is the Red House Sampler, which is fin it's framed. That's by Brenda Keys. I started that January 1st and finished it February 1st. So that was my very first finish. February, I did not. I'm just showing you samplers. I finished 10 samplers. So I'm not showing you um, any smalls or anything because I had 30 finishes total. Which, by the way, I need to get this out because that's a finish. This was another one. This is, I'm not showing you smalls, but remember I talked about this was going to be number 30 finish, so I did finish that. And this piece of ticking is what I'm going to put on the back of it, and then I'm going to wrap it on that spool that I showed you last time. So that was finish number four, finish number 30. Okay, um, let's see. I have them written down in order, but I don't have them stacked in order. I'm not going to show them an order. I only had two months that I didn't have sampler finishes, February and October. October, I should have had um, Ghoul Tide Welcome. It's in a, my whip basket, so I will finish that, but it didn't get finished in 2020. So finish number one, or one of the finishes, was the Red House sampler. I've shown that before. In fact, I think I showed it last time on my um, framed pieces. Another one I finished was Red Deer. Now, when I say I finished them, I could have started these in years prior. I didn't start and finish. But I call it a finish in whatever year I finish it. It's like a baby being born. It might have been conceived in November. But if it's born in the next year, we don't say when it was conceived. <laughs> We talk about when it was born. So think of my finishes as being when they were born. So these were all born <laughs> in 2020. So Red Deer by GGR. I'm not going to go into the um, linens and everything I used, mainly because I don't remember. I do have them all written down in my book of days. I started keeping my book of days in 2016. So I have prior years. I think 2016 I only did like half a year. So I can actually go back and tell you when I started things, but not everything that finished in 2020 was a start and a finish. I also finished Smith Sampler. Now this one I did start and finish in 2020 and framed. <laughs> That's the miracle. Because I'm going to show you a lot of pieces that I have finished but not framed. This is by the Scarlet House. The Smith Sampler. That one I know is on Meadow Rue by Lakeside. And my Red Deer is on Cedar Plank by Lakeside. I also finished Esther Edison. Whoops. Esther Edison. In 2020, she is out for framing. So I don't have her here to show you. I think I started this one in 2016. 2017, maybe. Definitely finished or started it a while ago. I also finished in 2020 Mary Bars. She's a big girl, and she's also out for framing. I have three out for framing. The third one was not a 2020 finish, but it was Mary Cook. She's also a big one. So those three are the ones I have out for framing. But I just showed you the picture because it's out for framing, not because I finished it in 2020. Clear as mud? Okay. Then I also finished Jane Baxter in 2020. This was one I finished in December. This is by Victorian Rose Needle Arts. I think it's on Weeks Parchment. I think it's 35 count. I have, I have these hanging, and this doesn't even include all the smalls that I'm finished. I need, I need to have somebody that just lives in a closet and comes out to do finishing and framing and then I put them back in the closet. I, I would feed them, of course. <laughs> Maybe let them take a walk around the block so they get a little exercise and then they, they got to go back to work. 
Um, I finished Peace and Goodwill. This is by Chessie and me. Um, I think this is on Beach Brew by R&R. &R and this, I showed this on my last video because this was a December finish. So of these 10 samplers that I finished in 2020, this is what I'm showing you. There again, I didn't start them all then. This is Merrily, Merrily, We Welcome Spring by Blackbird, also finished in 2020. And this one, I really did do the majority in 2020. Peace and Goodwill, I started and finished. Jane Baxter, I started and finished. This is one that I think I had the outer border and maybe one or two bands done prior to picking it up in 2020. And then I finished that. I started and finished the red chair sampler by the Scarlet House. Love this. I started and finished All Joys for Thine by Blackbird. This is a picture of this plus. I'm not sure if it's, I'm not sure which one it is. Blackbird lately has been, um, they're called for is a lot of pictures plus. Um, this one is Oh Joyous Day, started and finished in 2020. Also by Blackbird, also on a picture of this plus. Um, the next few I'm going to show you are ones that, I, so that's all that I finished in 2020. The next ones I'm going to show you are ones that are finished but not framed. And they could have been finished three or four years ago. They just haven't been framed. This is Bells on Christmas Day by Blackbird. These are the ones that I have just hanging in my sewing room on a skirt hook, skirt hanger. This is uh, the Needleworker Sampler, I think is the name of it, by Brenda Gervais. That's also done on Picture This Plus. And why I didn't surge the edges of this, I'll have no, I'll never know. I usually surge because I do have a serger. It's about 30 years old, but it still works fine. This is Elizabeth Hunter. Again, this is finished but not framed, but not finished in 2020 by the Scarlet House. Um, and I've shown all these on previous videos. This is Christmas is Past, or Winter is Past by Blackbird. Finished but not framed. This is Jane Stanwick's, and I got off the pattern on this because I couldn't remember who it was by. Jane Stanwick's by Samplers Revisited, finished but not framed. I love this one. That This needs to go in my next batch to be framed. This is uh, American Sampler by Plum Street. This one I think I finished in 2018. And this one, another one, and I do have some smalls also, but I didn't include them. And also some Christmas pieces. Um, this is Sarah Casey Unwin, finished but not framed by Chessie and me. So that's a little bit of my, what I've been working on, my haul, my finished but not framed. Stuff that needs to, but truly, if I fit, if I had all those framed, I have no idea. I'd have to hang them on the ceiling, because my hallway is already, um, and that's kind of ones that I don't have out in this living room area. Now, if it's if it's totally out of season, like Halloween and Hollyberry, I put it in the hallway. But I do have a couple Christmas pieces, like Christmas garden. Christmas at Hollyberry. There's some Christmas pieces, and I don't mind leaving Americana pieces out all year. But I don't want to put this one in the hallway, although I do have some big ones in the hallway. But it's ceiling to floor. 
It's, it's not a real long haul, but it's ceiling to floor. And then this room, I, I can't really go up and I don't really want to go down because I don't, I don't want things down on the floor. There is a wall there that's a short wall between two windows that I could probably smush some of them up. Just depends. It's, it takes some arranging. Although my husband's really good about helping me hang stuff. And he hung a quilt the other day. So he hung a quilt that took the place of my Christmas quilt. He evened up some samplers that I had kind of just... Sometimes I'll just put them up if there's a nail or a um, hanger thing from before. and They're like out of whack. <laughs> okay, you ready? It's time for the drink. This is my whips. So here goes. I am not going to tell you about every bag because A, I don't remember, <laughs> and B... I don't remember. <laughs> but I do know I got this bag. It was a set. And it was this and then a smaller bag. Like a um, accessory or um, utensils. Not utensils. <laughs> yeah, put your forks and spoons in there, girl. No, for like your scissors and floss and all that. <laughs> accessory bag. But I did get this from Dying to Stitch years ago. This is Blackbird fabric. And... You know, I need to get something to hang on each one of these so that if I'm trying to find a sampler, I don't have to like, okay, where is it? And go through every one until I find it. Because generally it's the last one you look at, right? Yeah, because then you quit looking. So the three and four in here are all Scarlet House. And you're just going to have to put up with me rustling and... All of that. Do you want to see the threads for each one? This is um, Ann Topley by the Scarlet House. And this is 40 count 18th century blackbird. And I just barely have a start on this. Now the inside of it is very um, colorful. Well, actually, I have the border frame down, so. And I have a way oversized piece of linen, so I need to get that cut down. Okay, my husband gave me a box to put everything into. It's like everything's going to be every which way if you don't. This one, this is going to take a while. Is Ellen Strick, also by the Scarlet House. This one I have quite a bit finished. There's a lot of over one on this, like a lot of over one. And it's on 46 count something. And I'm using Tudor silks, which, and I'm doing full crosses on the 46 count because Tudor silks are so fine. So that's Ellen Strick by the Scarlet House. I'm not going to put them back in the bag. I'm just going to go down. This one I barely have a start on. I wasn't sure about my linen. This is Anne Long, 1826 by the Scarlet House. This one I have the top border done. This one's going to be a little bit kind of big. This is a pretty big piece. I love this, but I, I, I was just unsure about my linen color because part of these flowers have that kind of really almost like a tone on tone type goldish. And I wasn't sure if they were, oops, I wasn't sure if it was going to show up. Where is it? Right here. But there's also the red of the flowers. So I think I'm going to continue with this in the linen it's in. Because I still love it. And I'm using Gloriana silks.
And for those of you, oh, that's on 37 Count Legacy by Access Commodities. And for those of you who think this is a lot of whips, you're right, but they're mine, and I own them. <laughs> this is Mary Miller, and this one I think I showed you last time, I just barely started. So, Mary Miller by the Scarlet House. And here's the colors, teals, golds, browns. So I'll get back to that at some point. But that's not, it's not as much of an urgency. I don't know that any of them are urgent. but um, This is to kind of... I try to kind of group them together like it, like that was four Scarlet House pieces. So this one's by the City Stitcher. This is called the Adam and Eve Sampler. I saw this finished at Tanya, the Scarlet House is at her home. I'm using DMC. It was beautiful. And I'm working on the border. Oops. And yes, a lot of them I just leave the needle in there because I'm not scared. I touch a lot of these too. So this one actually I started and then I decided to restart. This, so there's no progress on this one, but this I definitely want to work on. This is um, Lucy Red Sampler. I had quite a bit of it done on a different color linen and it just wasn't showing up. And I think it was um, Tracy Riffle, Hands to Work. She was working on hers and she had used a much lighter linen than I did, so I switched it. And I'm gonna use this 40 count exemplar. So that technically is not a whip. You wanna get technical. And let's see what else is in this little bag. Nothing. That's it. I know. This was my Thanksgiving start. This one is um, Barbara Anna, All Creatures. And this one, I have the border, and I'm starting on the border flowers. But I probably will move on in. This is on Country Mocha, 40 Count Country Mocha. I will probably move right into the, you know, some of these multi or animals and a barn, and because just doing those flowers on the and leaves on the border is a little boring. And I'm using anchor with this, which is what it calls for. Oops. So that was my Thanksgiving start. I definitely want that one on my walls because I love that piece and I've loved it for quite a while. A lot of people have stitched that one a lot. Okay, what's in what's in this bag? <laughs> this is And They Send, which I know many of you have seen or familiar with. And this one I'm using, it's a comb it's mostly DMC. Wait, this doesn't go with this. Yes, it does. It's mostly it's mostly overdyed with a few DMC. And I started this, and I just wasn't a hundred percent sold on my linen. But if you look at the picture, and this is kind of what I've told what did I do with the picture? Here it is. What I've told myself is that this part up here is very light until you get into the tree and you know certainly down here you get a little bit more color so I told myself it's kind of okay that this is light so I have quite a bit done at one time I was working on this every Sunday and that kind of went by the wayside then there was a time I was working on whips on weekends 
And then there was a time that I was going to do um, only red house samplers last year. <laughs> so basically, you can't believe anything I say. So this was for a different sampler, but it was one that I I did ab abandon. I would like to get back to it, but it was done on like. 30 count something, and I didn't have very much done, so I, I need to pick a different one. And it's the Francis somebody sampler. This is Winter Rose Manor. All of you are familiar with it. And I have two pieces of linen. This is the Zweigart Dirty that I first started it on wasn't thrilled with my colors, so then I got some Brenda's Brew. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. But I'm not going to worry about that till next fall. Because it, to me, it's a winter piece. Even if it's not Christmas, it's a winter piece. And although it's supposed to be down to 35 here tonight. <laughs> Who knew? Florida. <laughs> It's kind of cool out right now. It's like in the 40s, which I love because that gives us a little bit of season change. Actually, on Christmas, it was like down to 33. I think some of the outlying areas have had freezes, but it kills the bugs. <laughs> so I'm more than happy about that. Okay, this. But I don't like having the heat on. But my husband does, so I succumb. This is Maria Finney by Shakespeare's Peddler. I know you can get a um, conversion from the attic for this. No, I take that back. It's from Kitten Stitcher. She has her own silk conversion. Oops, this goes like this. Oh, no, it goes like this. How does it go? It goes like this. Does it? I'm gonna have to figure this out. I think it actually goes like this, which is really unusual because I don't usually start in the bottom. It does. Weird. Anyway, this is Maria Finney, Adam and Eve Sampler by Kitten Stitcher, Shakespeare's Peddler. So I'd have to figure out where I am on this one, <laughs> but I would like to finish it. I like it, and I like the colors. They're those kind of neutral, um, some tealy blues, browns. So, you know, I've done some samplers with those colors, and even though initially I'm like, oh, there's no red, but when they're done and on the wall, I really like them because they look antique. They look old. And I like things that look old. So. This is not really, well it is. This is the for, for the Parlor series and there's eight patterns all together. This is by Shakespeare's Peddler. I have all of the patterns. You can get them from Kitten Stitcher. It's her design. I did start it, but I'm feeling like I want to read. I don't know if it's worth restarting. This alphabet's supposed to be um, Smyrna Crosses, or Eyelet's one of them. And I didn't read the pattern. I just started stitching. <laughs> so, I don't know about that. The next one in here is Sweet Temper, also by Shakespeare's Peddler. I'm going to see if I can hold it up without taking out the plastic. Sweet Temper Temper Sampler. And this one, I got all the way around on the border, only to realize that the bottom is supposed to be... Um, Oh, 
it escaped me. I'll think of it in a minute. It's a different stitch on the bottom. So I was like, well, great. Now I got to take all that out. Satin stitch. It's supposed to be satin stitch, and I didn't satin stitch it. But it's kind of important because it's multiple colors of satin stitch. And it's grass. So I need to take that out. So this one I'm using what's called for, which is a combination of NPI, Verisua, Gloriana. I have a friend that has this almost finished, and it is gorgeous. So I'm easily influenced. Aren't we all? Okay, we're at 45 minutes, and I'm not halfway done. So, well, maybe I'm halfway. I don't know. I'm not counting. I'm not counting. <laughs> I may make a list, but I'm not counting. Um, this is my Anne Ariel by GGR. And I just have a small start on the border. And I'm using the Country Sampler conversion. And I love this piece. So I definitely need to get back to this. There's been a couple people I've seen that are stitching this. Okay. Good thing he told me to put a box there. This is all Brenda Gervais. I made this bag from one of her kits. This has all my word plays in it, so I don't have any word plays started that I haven't, well, I don't think I do, that I haven't finished. But I do have a piece in here, if I can find it. This is part of the schoolgirl, schoolgirl? Summer schoolhouse. And this is all over one, and this is where I am. And I love this piece, and I just need to, I love the whole set. So I'm not going to give up on it. But I kind of have to be in the mood. I'm getting better about just doing it, the over one. And... It really is very delicate and pretty when it's done. So oh, I'm flying through these, so maybe it won't take me too, too long. This next one, I have two patriotic pieces in here. The first one is Flag Folk by Not Forgotten Farm. I'm doing it on Murky. And this is where I am on this one. So along about April, I'll pick this up, and it's just a few colors, obviously red and blue. And then this one was actually, um, this is a kit from Country Sampler called The Grand Old Flag by Samplers Not Forgotten. with the country sampler conversion. And I just have a little bit of border progress on that one. And this is on weeks, I think, Confederate Gray. So those two I will definitely get back to and finish in um, this year. I like to stitch in season. So, you know, maybe April, May, something like that. I'll probably get back to those. This next one. These are more Scarlet House pieces. She's probably my favorite designer other than Blackbird. Blackbird I've just followed for so long and... Um, this is the seven sheep sampler 
And I know there's some people that have been stitching this on a lighter linen. I'm doing mine on 46 count autumn gold. And I personally like the darker linen because for me it's it's different. I don't want all of my samplers on a light lighter linen, so I'm fine with it. And um, I will keep going. Just a second, and I'll show you. These are the threads. That bright pink. And this kind of ends up being a bright yellow. Doesn't bother me. I like it. I like it because it's different, I think, it's, appeals to me. Different from some of the other samplers I've done. I guess I should say it that way. Um, this one is Mary Lindley. I started this sometime in December and did about, you know, 10 stitches, so that doesn't even really count. As a, as a whip, but it is. It's just a few colors, and they're all silks, Belsois silks. The next one I I've shown you recently. This is Hannah Tingy, Tingy, whatever. I started this one somewhere around around November first, something like that. And worked on that, and those I'm using the NPI silks. Threads. And this I know I'm doing on a piece of 40 count buttercream by Lakeside. So those are three Scarlet House ones Hannah Tingy, Seven Sheep, and Mary Lindley. Of course, the big decision. I would like to keep working on Elizabeth Watt until it's finished. That's the first, that's the one I showed you that's my current thing I've been stitching on since January 1st. I'd like to just finish that till it's, I mean, work on that till it's finished. And then, then I'm not sure. Um, I don't think I'm going to do a lot of spring stitching as far as like bunnies and I, I, there's a couple patterns, the Brenda Gervais and stuff that I really like, so I could, I could change my mind on that, but probably not. This is actually an R&R &R pattern that I've had for many, many years. I didn't start it all that long ago. This is the Sarah Jane Thompson, and Thompson is my mother's maiden name, so it appealed to me. It does have a lot of specialty stitches. And I'm stitching it kind of on a bigger piece of, I mean, a, a bigger, a smaller count. No, a bigger count. I want to say this is like 32. And I, this is probably my oldest whip. And it's just very neutral except for this teal and orange kind of which you don't even really see all that much, except at the bottom and the flowers. So it's pri primarily alphabets. But I really like this. So. And R&R &R reproductions, um, I talked to them this last week, and I've had a lot of people ask about the sampler that's in my opening part of the video that talks about, um, or the verbiage on it, the verse says, um, well, what does it say? Let me look. Oh, for a closer walk with God. And I had told people to call Dying to Stitch because it's an R&R &R reproduction pattern, just like this one is. See? R&R &R reproductions. So... People were just calling and saying, what sampler has that verse on it? And they were like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, we saw it on Carol's video. So they called and we talked and they, I said, oh, yeah, that's Agnes Pratt. No, Elizabeth Pratt. Pratt? I'm looking at it right now. Elizabeth Pratt. 
She's like, great, now I have to reprint that. I'm like, sorry. This next one is um, Anne Ufendel, which I love this. And so I started it. I'm going down the side. This is really a fun one. This is one that I really want to get back to. This is by Hands Across the Sea Samplers. And this one, um, the Primitive Stitcher, Suzette. I haven't seen one of her videos recently, so I hope all's well with her. But she used to sell these little books. I'm sure she still does. They have the rings. And then you could put your floss in them. So this is one that I'm doing with a Verisois silk, which it calls for. And I have them in these little. It doesn't close real tight because there's so many. But I just think it's so cool. And then I have it tagged with Anne Ufendel. So anyway, this one I'd really, I really would like to get back to. I'd actually like to sti stitch both, Anne and Isabella. This is a bag made by, I have a friend that makes these bags, and so she makes them tall. So it really works out nice for samplers that are, you know, take up a little bit more than just stuffing them in a project bag. So, or a horizontal one. They're more vertical. Okay, friends, what's next? Oh, another Hands Across the Sea. This is the sal that's currently going on. Ann Morrison through to traditional stitches. When I got the box with this in it, <laughs> the box had been wet. You could tell it was, it was dry when I got it, but it had been wet, and it smelled like fish. <laughs> My husband and I, we don't... I eat tuna, but we I don't ever fix fish because he doesn't like it. He doesn't even like anything that smells like fish. So I brought the box in and I thought, oh, I, this looks like it's been wet. And I thought, well, I hope it's everything. Everything inside was fine. No problem. But I always smell it, but it doesn't. It smells, it doesn't smell. So it was just the bag, evidently, or the box that had gotten. <laughs> anyway, I'm using the 103 silk. And I have the same meager start. And this is on the 45 count Jersey Cream by um, Legacy Fabrics by Access Commodities. So that is on another bag my friend made. I gave her the fabric and she made that for me. So, so my two kind of tall bags are my hands. Whoops. Sorry. Uh, my next one. Oh, yeah. I love these. <laughs> these are two scarlet letter pieces. This one is Anne Grimshaw, which... Did Teresa Kitten Stitcher finish this? or I think she finished hers. I'm using the Gloriana Antique Black Silks. I have a little bit done on this. Not a super lot. This is on Pecan Butter by Lakeside. And this is where I am on it. I think this is one that I really, really want to get back to for sure. The other one is Jenny Bean by The Scarlet Letter. This is actually all full coverage here because you stitch it on black. I started it, and I have a Verisois silks to go on that. I started this on this piece of 36 count shadow, but your perspective, it looks purple. My perspective, it looks gray. But I don't want the chance of anything on the wall that looks, I, purple's not my favorite color. So this would actually be a restart. I have a piece of 32 count gunmetal. And 32 count with a Verisois works because with one strand because um, 
Averisois is a thicker, thicker thread, thicker floss. So those are my two scarlet letter pieces that I have in a Mama Joan bag, which you always know because she puts a little Made by Mama Joan tag on there. You can find her on Etsy, Made by Mama Joan. This one, I only have about eight left. It's kind of overwhelming though, isn't it? No, it's not. This is Ann Rayner. This is one of those wanted to stitch forever. And some of my other ones that I've wanted to stitch forever were like the Smith Sampler, Red Deer. So I know uh, I know I will get to this. But this is Ann Rayner. I don't have a lot finished. But I do have a start on the border. And this is actually... Um, this is on 40 count light exemplar by Lakeside. And this is actually a conversion by um, Plum Street. It was on her blog, I think. There's the Ann Rayner. Kind of looks like Sarah Stewart Hardeman, which I already also have, but I have not started that one. I don't think I've even kitted it, but I might have. Who knows? So if I have 30 whips and I can do and I don't do very many smalls this year, I should at least be able to knock out part of them. <laughs> this is a terrible chart, <laughs> but it's an older chart. I don't even know if Ann Rayner if you can still get the pattern anymore. I think I got mine from the attic. This is the ES spot sampler. This was one of my unicorn charts for a long time. I finally had someone send it to me. I bought it from them. And this is one of the ones Brenda had on her video on her walls. But I have the border finished. I, I For a while I was second guessing the colors. But I, I think it... My overhead is a Dezar, an older Dezar lamp that I have. And... It's kind of a fluorescent -y type of light, I think. It's not like daylight. I, know, I also have a daylight one. I have two. Um, so I think some of sometimes when I second guess the colors, it's because my lighting isn't that great. So then I'll wait until the next day and I'll look at it and go, oh, yeah. So I'm going to set this aside because this is definitely one that I want to finish this year. That and N Rainer both. Oh, this is a big bag. <laughs> this is one that I made. <laughs> Back when I thought it would be fun to make project bags. Not. <laughs> okay, it's time to drink. We don't have furnaces in Florida. We have heat pumps. I don't know if it's a dryer air or what, but I literally, it's 50 degrees outside and I could have the windows open. I'm always hot. This is the village of Hawkrone Hollow. Of course it is because, you know, have to. This one, let's see, it was, it was a 24 hours of cross stitch. I think one of the early ones, maybe 20, 19 I can't remember and I stitched all of the borders frames whatever you want to call that so I've done the first block I'm working on the second block and this would be a fun one to just say let's just do a block a month you know I'm one of the crazy people that's using in the NPIs so this is another reason I need to finish this because that's I hear you gasping. I hear it. It's so loud. I hear it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I collect these over time. And this is my quilt money. I worked my buns off with my long arm quilting machine 
to make money for stitching, framing, linen, threads. So, that's the truth of it. <laughs> the other thing I have is Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow. This was actually a trade with Christy Crosshatch Quilts. And again, I sort of like how people, I don't know, have taken out the Halloween, especially if they're going to do Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. And I, I could have just picked up where she left off. The problem is we stitch opposite. But I would like to leave something that she stitched. So I'm thinking about leaving the pumpkins that she stitched and maybe take out some of the rest. I don't know. I'm going to decide that by summer. And maybe I'll just put a few stitches in and see how, how different it looks. But what I mean by stitches differently, her cross goes, the, her last leg of the cross goes the opposite of mine. But maybe on 40 count, it wouldn't, you know, who, who's even going to know? I don't know. We shall see. And some of the threads for this I have in the other Hawk Run Hollow. And these I'll probably order the NPIs as I go, because I also want to do that. A lot of Kathy Barrick or Carriage House call for NPIs. And I love stitching with NPIs, so I don't mind splurging to get them. This next one you saw a lot of this fall. I started it. Somebody gave me, graciously gave me the pattern. This is the plantation sampler. I have quite a bit of it finished. And this is another one I will definitely finish this year. If nothing else, then to honor the gal that gave me the pattern. I thought she loaned it to me, and I mentioned I needed to finish it because she loaned it to me. And she sent me a note and said, no, you can have that pattern. And I was like, oh, you're so nice. That was very, very sweet. And this I'm actually stitching on 36 count vintage beeswax by r, &R which is very similar to the color of the chart picture. And I'm, I love it. So I think I put that one, I worked on that in Sampler September, I started it. And I think I put it down when I started um, Ghoul Tide Welcome. Next one. Oh, I'm not even going to show you this because this is, uh, this is, well, I guess I could. This is Anniversaries of the Heart. And you all know. I've showed it before. All I need to do is the personalization. And I'm going to start every month. I'm going to do something. So this month in January, I'm going to do my daughter's because she was born in January. In fact, her birthday's next weekend. So I think she's going to Disney. I think she said she, they're already booked. They're going to Disney for her birthday. They've already been once to Disney since the, they opened again. She said every you have to wear a mask and they're you know everything is very. Um, I don't know if you want to say orderly or careful, but they were happy to be able to go. They love Disney. Their kids love Disney. This next the next two these I worked on during Sam the sampler September. This is Jane Cowie by the Scarlet House. Again, she's one of my favorite, if not next to Blackbird, my favorite designer. So this one, I have a good section of the top finished. Another one I definitely want to finish this year. And let's see where the silks are at. Here they are. Tanya from the Scarlet House is another one who um, loves NPIs. 
So she, NPI meaning needlepoint silk. Sometimes it'll say NPS, sometimes it says NPI. Needle needlepoint silk um, floss. This next one is Charlotte Clayton, which another one that I definitely want to finish this year. I have, I have a lot of it finished. It just looks like it's kind of in sections because I jumped around a lot. But I still have a lot to do in here, plus the over one. It was interesting when I sent my framing um, to Total Framing. And Terry, I think it was Terry, opened it. And there was um, Mary Bars and Esther Edison, which both have a lot of over one. <laughs> she said, well, I can see you enjoy over one. And I was like, uh, not really. But I will power through it because... I love the samplers. So that's Charlotte Clayton and um, Jane Cowie. Sorry for all the fussing and fiddling and just goes with the territory. Um, this is my Ghoul Tide Welcome, which I haven't touched. I thought I might get back to it during the end of, or the week between Christmas and New Year's, but not so much. So I still have to do the leaves on the tree, finish this pumpkin stuff, and then there's some over one with the, um, you know, made by, wrought by. But 90, 92.5% of that is finished. Oh my, I forgot. These are, oh, these are falling down in there. This is a lot of lips. Okay. These two are Brenda Gervais. This one, Brenda, Brenda the Sampler Stitcher, just finished. This is Manor at Quaker Hill. It's really weird. Some of these I haven't surged. I have my serger out. I must have just not been in the mood to serge it. Definitely want to finish that one. That, that to me kind of spring, you know, seems kind of springish. So I really don't mind working on that in the spring. And I'm just using the called for over dies. Well, actually, there's a few DMCs. And this is another one. This this one I this is probably another one of my oldest. I'd say this is probably three. Maybe I don't know when this came out. This is three or four years old, I think. This is Sampler Hill by Brenda Gervais. When I first started stitching this, it just wasn't gaga on some of the colors. So I changed. And then I was second guessing my changes. And there's a needle up here. But I just need to get back to it because I love this and it's not huge. This is one of the ones that I would really say. And I don't know why I don't have these on a ring. <laughs> anyway, that's a blob of a mess. I guess it used to be on a ring. I must have stolen the ring for something else. I don't know. I can't be held accountable for my own actions. I definitely am going to leave this out because that's silly. I mean, there's a lot of stitching on it, but it's not that big. Uh, let's see. I think there's only a couple left. Good thing, right? <laughs> this is the one everybody has finished. The ship has landed. Where's the front of the pattern? Here it is. 
Texas, Coming to America by Brenda Gervais. So these last three pieces are all Brenda Gervais. And this is where I am. I have the border done, working on the ship, ship and the waves and the people. And I love this. So I, I really would like to get that done. I don't have any objections to f any of these, finishing any of these. Oh, here's the multiples. Every time I pull a bag and it has multiples, it's like, oh, I guess I don't really have just three left. Okay, this one has more than one. This is Mary Good by Sassafras Samplers. And, which is only available through Sassy Jeffs. And I have this much done. And this one doesn't even have over one. So this one I need to finish for sure. It's very pretty. It's just pretty. So that, that probably needs to, I need to pick like 10 or 12 to really focus on this year and go from there. This I'm doing the Averisua silks. I think I bought that kitted from Sassy Jets. This one is another, some of these I started in 2019. And then when the 2020 pandemic hit, it was like, oh, let's just start all kinds of new stuff. Because when I went, when I started 2020, I only had like 12 whips. And now I have 30-some. Plus, I finished 10 samplers. So, yeah, it was, it was crazy mode. This one is Miss Manners by GGR. That's the antique. Um, I'm pretty sure Brenda has finished this. Look at that beautiful red. And I have I have quite a bit on this done. I need to just get back to this. This is on 36 count something. Maybe parchment? I don't know. It's very pretty. See, look at that tree. It's very pretty. And that's kind of an array. And I will tell you, and I'm not embarrassed to say, most of my samplers, I just like to do them in silks. Silk is a much stronger fiber. It's going to outlast. So they can hang out at the Goodwill even longer <laughs> than the cotton ones. <laughs> Until somebody has mercy on them and says, oh, let's save the stitches. <laughs> Rustling, rustling. I know. I'm sorry. This last one is Mary Gibson. Um, Angel, also known as A Cherub on Instagram. She's the first one I saw finish this. And this one I did my own conversion. So this one, I pulled the silks for it in 2018 because I remember doing it when I was at Stitchville in Minneapolis when I went for the fall Midwest cross stitch retreat. And I went around and I had all the DMCs that I, I had pulled my own DMCs and then I went around and converted to silks. Now there's a couple that I did, you know, like color to color conversion but I've decided st since to change because this house down here, these houses, the actual called for is kind of a purpley gray and I don't, I don't want purpley gray. I'd rather have a blue gray. This actually does not have any over one. I love this piece and it's big. Let's see, here we go. The border's done. This is where I started on the house. 
with the color that I like. So this is 40 count something. Maybe pecan butter. Kind of looks like pecan butter. So that one I did my own conversion. So I don't usually do that because I don't have access to a store locally that carries any silks. So it's I can't I can't do it long distance. It just isn't happening. Two more bags. We're at an hour twenty. I told you this is gonna be a long one. I hope it all uploads. Um This next one is, of course, his eyes on the sparrow with cottons. I'm doing this on Heartland, and this is how far I am. So, I got a long way to go, people. And I don't mind ever using 36 count. I've kind of converted to, like, I prefer 40 but I used to prefer 36. To me, 40, you just get used to it. Your eyes kind of adjust. But I don't mind at all 36 Picture This Plus because I feel like it's a tighter weave. And so, um, but anyway, here's the start. I'm sure there's some threads I'll need more of. So I definitely want to do this. And I also have kitted the um, Consider the Lilies. And last but not least, oh, these three are Blackbird in a Blackbird bag made by Christy. Cross hatch quilts. I think I sent her the fabric for that because I have a lot of Blackbird fabric. This is another definitely want to finish this year. This is Maria Selby Humphrey in the book by the same name. And This is where I am on this. So this one I'm doing with the called for cottons. They're very neutral. And the other one is Sarah's house. I started on this and I wasn't happy with my colors. It calls for Belsois silks, but two of the silks are supposed to be quite a contrast. One is Dinky Dyes and one is Belsois. And one is supposed to be dark and the other's light, and really they're just about the same. So what I'm going to do is pull the light ones from here. And the darker ones, I think, from this. I'm, I'm not sure. I actually had two of the Ivy League. So this one has some lighter ones. But it frustrated me. Because there's, it's supposed to be quite a contrast. Whoops. If you look here, you can see the contrast between the light and dark on the border. So it's called Sarah's House in the book by the same name. And that, folks, is my whip parade. So that is what I'm starting 2021 with. And um, I have a lot of stitching to do. <laughs> but it's all happy stuff. And I'm thrilled that I have had the opportunity to collect all the silks and all the goodies. And so I'm thrilled. Even if I only work on whips this year, I have plenty to do and I'm enjoying it. So that's my plan. So I hope y'all are having a um, great Saturday. This will take a while to upload and I'm perfectly fine. Everybody should watch this in segments because it's a lot. So anyway, I will let you go now and I just hope you have a good rest of the next couple of weeks and I will see you soon. Love you. Bye.